All right, guys, hello and welcome to episode eight of the City Connect podcast with me, your host, Prince Carl. I'm joining you this lovely day from what I would call my either my second home or my first home, Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, more specifically West Valley, Utah, at the Swift Yard in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's kind of our central hub. And um, I've had a most wonderful, relaxing day here. Um, basically in trucking you're either running you know one day maybe run 500 miles a day or you're sitting and either way it's good I I really love it either way I don't mind driving driving kind of energizes me gets me through my day Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts which is why I started this podcast and I also uh, listen to a lot of music and I also make the rounds make the phone calls so you're either on the road and kind of doing that whole thing and the days go by super quick, or you're just sitting, and here at the terminal is pretty cool. Uh, we've got a lot of space to move around. We've got uh, kind of a game room uh, with a pool table and you know pinball games, and we've got showers and bathrooms. And there's a taco guy that shows up, but he didn't show up tonight, even though he told me he was going to show up. So I don't know what his deal was. But it's it's just kind of it's it's kind of cool. I mean, it's 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 just kind of a rhythm. It's it, in every sense of the of the of the term it's it's a lifestyle it's not a job and it's a lifestyle that I enjoy and um, I just wanted to say how uh, sort of humbled I am by this podcast because um, it's weird I haven't I apologize that I have not been doing this podcast and I haven't put out an episode Uh, I think the last episode was published May 24th and I'm surprised despite how little episodes I am actually putting out on the podcast, how popular it remains to be. Um, and it still continues to get views. And, uh, you know, people actually are asking me like, Hey, when are you going to post another podcast? So I have a few episodes, a few things I want to talk about today. I'm just enjoying my, uh, my, my sort of, uh, vitamin C zinc beverage. Um, I want to talk about, I kind of got into a little bit about trucking, but I want to talk about, you know, how lucky and how grateful I am with that. Um, I want to specifically talk about some businesses I'm not interested in being a part of that I don't like. Um, and then I want to make some predictions uh, predictions for the future, um, just so that I have it on record so that, you know, if you happen to listen to this podcast in the year 2021 in the future, you know, you have a record of me uh, uh, accurately, hopefully, predicting the future. Um, but um, yeah, how lucky I am, how grateful I am, it's, it's incredible. Um, you know, I originally got into trucking, wasn't really sure how it was gonna work out. All I knew is that I liked to drive. I had never been in a truck in my entire life. I, I went through the academy at Swift. It was a complete blur. It was just a bunch of idiots all telling each other what to do is the blind leading the blind the graduation rate is probably around five to six maybe seven percent of people that actually make it to the point that I'm at now two years later I'm now at the point where I'm a mentor so I'm actually teaching new students and getting them out there on the road um, but the the Academy was a complete blur there was a lot of stress involved with it um, there was a lot of dread of just fear. I mean, you're driving an 80,000 pound vehicle, it's 70 feet long, 13 feet, six inches high, and you know, 10, about 10 feet wide. And, um, you know, it's not like driving a car in, in any respect. It's, it's, there's a lot of similar similarities between driving a truck and flying a plane. You're constantly worried about weight, you're constantly worried about wind, you're constantly worried about speed. Um, You're constantly aware that your actions could result in a uh, massive fatality, you know, just one second, one half second, uh, not holding the wheel or looking away could be disastrous. So it's it's a big responsibility and it started out as kind of something that I was very, I, I had a lot of fear, but the fear was good because it focused me into the good driver that I am now. I have very good foundations as a driver. And, um... I'm very comfortable driving. I'm more comfortable driving a truck than I am driving a car. Driving a car to me seems very unsafe. It seems um, awkward. It seems crammed in. It seems 
just unnatural and it's weird that I've gotten to that point. So I'm, I'm definitely a trucker. And um, like I was saying, when I started, um, they originally put me on as driving a reefer. A reefer is a refrigerated trailer. And a reefer drives around all food. I mean, the only thing that you'd put in a reefer would be food, you know, dairy, meat, poultry, whatever. Um, and so originally I didn't want to do it and I was like, no, you know, this is too much of a hassle and I don't want to deal with this. And, uh, you know, and then I kind of got into the, the swing of things and now I'm at a point where not only is it an essential job because I'm delivering food all over the country, um, but it's also, you know, it's a, it's a job that hasn't slowed down at all, which I'm incredibly fortunate for. Um, it, um, you know, not only that, but <clears throat> trucking sometimes can have its cyclical ups and downs, you know, especially what they call dry box. Dry box would be anything other than a refrigerated trailer. So, you know, they're driving clothes, equipment, toys, whatever, whatever is not, doesn't need to be refrigerated. And they can have cyclical ups and downs depending on what time of year and also, you know, with regard to the economy. So when the economy was slow back in 2008, they were slow and then they usually get slow kind of after the cold Christmas rush. But with driving a refrigerated trailer and driving food around, it never slows down. It's, it, it gets a little bit busier around summer when people eat more and around Christmas when people eat more. But, you know, by and large, regardless of where the economy is or where people are economically with their circumstance, the one thing they're definitely going to do and continue to do is buy food and eat food. So I'm incredibly lucky. Um, I'm in a position now where um, shortly I'll be able to buy my own truck and then uh, I want to start to have a fleet of multiple trucks you know, and hire drivers and just keep running food and just stick with that and, and build this business at a time when the economy is very slow. If I can be successful building a, building a, a business when the economy is slow, um, you know, when things pick back up three, four, five years from now, you know, there, there's going to be a lot more opportunities that open up, but it's going to be good to say, hey, I, I built this business back in 2020. That's one thing about 2020 is that, you know, whatever happens this year, it's it's such a strange year. Um, there's so many wild things going on, unpredicted, predictable things. You know, you look at where the economy was in 2018. The economy was doing better in the U.S. than it ever had been historically. The freight rates and freight volume were were white hot. They were they were hotter than they ever had been. And then you go to now, and it's just like uh, it seems like everything's collapsed. And, what the way I look at it is that uh, 2020 is a a new beginning, and and, and in a large part it is. It's a new um, it's a new decade. It's a new beginning. It's a new start. And um, I was working at a moving company up until March of this year. Uh, that was very hard work, uh, physically draining, just literally dripping sweat. Um, coming home exhausted every day, lifting furniture, you know, 20,000 pounds of household furniture in and out of a truck, up and down stairs. It was crazy. Um, but uh, that that kind of, everything kind of changed March 15th, you know, 2020. Everybody knows that was kind of the start of the whole quarantine. And um, my old company, Swift, was calling me up and said, hey, you should come back and uh, we've, we've got something we can offer you and we really need you. So ironically, despite all of the economic shutdown and everything that was happening, uh, this was one sector that was actually making more money. Um, it's kind of interesting when you look at like Walmart, they, uh, they have made more money this year than they have in, in a long time. And um, so there are, there are faint glimmers of hope, as I would say, uh, in the, the Grand Budapest Hotel great movie um, shout out to Wes Anderson but I am very very fortunate as I said to be one of those faint glimmers of hope if you're ever considering being a truck driver I would be honored if you would talk to me about it and I could certainly you know talk up I could talk about trucking probably for a day straight if I wanted to um, and one thing I've noticed one interesting perspective that I have uh, in trucking is that it's you know, I can be in four different states in the U.S. 
um, in one day. You know, I might start in Idaho, shoot over to, you know, or for example, start in California, drive through Arizona, go up through Utah, uh, maybe I end up in Colorado or something. So I can be, you know, four states in one day. And what I've noticed as I go around the country is that everyone has their own sort of unique um, regional uh, approach to the pandemic and mask wearing and so forth. And, you know, you go to, into places in Oklahoma and Texas and it's almost as if nothing ever happened and no one even really talks about it and certainly doesn't wear a mask. And then you go to places like LA and it's kind of like, you so much as go out of your house without a mask on you're publicly shamed and um, you know they they, they they take it a lot more seriously um, and it, again it's it could be political it could just be regional it, but it's just it's interesting because I'm in this perspective where I'm this kind of neutral guy that's like going from state to state to state community 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 and trying to find some sort of a, a, of a balance that doesn't necessarily offend people if I walk around without a mask on. I do wear a mask. I probably will put it on when I show up at a new customer or at a shipper. Um, you know, I'll put it on as I first walk into a restaurant, but obviously, you know, you can't wear a mask 24-7. Like, you're not going to sleep with a mask on. You're not going to drive around with your mask on. You're not going to eat with a mask on. So it's kind of like, you know, kind of this thing that you just have to be cognizant of cognizant of and, and I also am very fortunate too because as far as the whole quarantining thing goes I'm essentially one guy in a truck um, and I noticed in the first year of trucking 2018 2019 was the first year of my life that I never got sick and it was weird it was like I, I didn't get a cold or the flu or anything and I realized it was because I was basically alone in the truck most of the time um, now I do have a student from time to time but you know, that's that's working out well. So um, I'm gonna get into predictions for what I think is gonna happen in the near future in 2021. Ah, cheers to you, my vitamin C beverage. And um, before that, um, I want to say, uh, upcoming guests, I'm going to try to interview, Here we're going to get some, some shout outs here, um, I'm going to try to interview Chris Noble, aka Trash Bag Host, uh, shout out, we're going to talk about the Kent Landsberg experience, the Kent Landsberg was the, a packaging company that I worked for, oh man, back in, I, think, I want to say 2006, 2007, and um, it was a unique experience because it was a very archaic, old company, and so what I'm trying to do is kind of retroactively go back and, and talk to some of my former co-workers uh, from that experience and, and get their take on certain things. And it's, it's, it's funny, I mean, I had this manager that was just kind of out of control and it was kind of this classic like 1980s business, you know, we all wore shirts and ties and we'd talk about business and it was, it was a sales job so I would basically go out to different um, businesses and walk in and try to quote them on their packaging. Hey, how many boxes do you guys buy? Well, we buy this many boxes and all right, well, let me, let me give you a quote. Let me see if we can save you some money on your packaging and your shrink wrap means. And that was basically what it was. But the, the company was so archaic in the way that it was run. It was, it was almost ridiculous. It felt like I was in the 80s. So, again, I'm not, I'm not going to talk too much directly about that. I'm going to let my, um, my guests uh, dispel that. The previous episode, 7, we, we talked with Saurabh Tomas. Excuse me. Shout out to Saurabh. Uh, he had some things to say about that. And, um, yeah, um, let me switch gears a little bit here. I want to, I want to just quickly insert, um, types of businesses that I try to avoid and why one of them, a perfect example of a business I would try to avoid would be a restaurant. Um, a good restaurant with good food takes an incredible amount of labor to pull it off from the food preparation to the food service to the cleaning and I don't like businesses that require a lot of labor um, and the reason is that there's too many loose ends there's too many people there's too many too much HR to deal with you people are messy you know people cause problems People have individual, unique perspectives and personalities, and that's fine, but when you're trying to run a cohesive you know, 
business and enterprise, it gets, the more people you have involved, the harder it gets. And so the restaurant business, whereas I, I really enjoy going to restaurants, but it's something that I just would never get involved with. There's, it's just too labor intensive. Another example of something that I would not, that I recently got out of was the moving industry. Um, and I got back over to being, to working at Swift, which is running freight. The moving industry, you know, you're going to be loading 20,000 pounds of household goods, furniture, boxes, and so forth, into a truck, downstairs, upstairs, whatever. And in order to do that, you're going to need about four guys to physically lift the stuff, in, in addition to physically lifting the stuff yourself. Um, and then every stop you make is going to require two, three, four guys to, to pull the stuff out and pull the stuff back in. And, and not only that, but the guys that are doing it need to know what they're doing, need to be good at what they're doing, need to know how to load a trailer, how to unload a trailer, how to lift, how to, how to maneuver furniture. If anything breaks, it's completely your fault. But, you know, the point at which I decided to get out of moving was the point at which I realized it's going to take a lot of labor which is messy. Um, you're gonna be all over the country, so you have to coordinate. These four or five guys that show up to unload and load your trailer have to be coordinated everywhere you go. You may or may not know them or have a reputation with them. Um, there's, you know, the point at which I realized moving was basically one guy with one trailer loading and unloading it. And that's basically all it ever was. He, he's gonna make what he makes. As soon as his wheels stop turning, he stops earning. It's not something you can scale unless you own, um, you know, like a, uh, what do they call them? They don't call them dealerships, but the moving industry calls them a, uh, an affiliate, I think they call them. Sorry, that, that word will come back to me. But, you know, it's basically your truck, your trailer. Soon, As long as you're making money, you're making money. But when you stop for two months because you want to go on a vacation or you, you hurt yourself, you're not making a dime. With what I'm doing now, running Reefer, um, you can scale it. They would call us, they call us dock jockeys. All we do is we open our doors, we bump a dock, we get loaded or we get, we get unloaded, that's it. I don't see the freight, I don't touch the freight, I don't deal with the freight. Um, so the advantage of that is, is ease. It's easy once you know what you're doing after a few years to drive straight down the freeway and go to these shippers and customers that you've been to before. It's, it's not challenging. It's something that you can also scale because you can lease additional trucks and you can have drivers uh, driving. Um, you know, you, you are permitted to do that with an owner operator contract, which is pretty cool. So it's something that you could turn into a business, start a, a small logistics company and have it be fairly profitable such that you could just manage the business um, or own it remotely and you know get off the road I wouldn't have to be on the road 12 months out of the year I could just you know I could stay home if I so chose to do that but um, so that's an advantage of what I'm doing over over the moving thing um, it's also more steady work too because you know like I said moving food across the country doesn't really slow down it's it, it, whether I'm doing it or I'm not doing it the, the food will always move. Um, I hope that this is a really good hour. This is uh, what they call uh, golden hour or magic hour in cinematography because it's right after the sunset. So, you know, it's got this nice kind of glow and I hope that I look good and there isn't too much interference in the background. You probably hear a little bit of wind. There's a slight breeze blowing you probably maybe can hear the rumble in the distance of the trucks idling. It's kind of a small community here of uh, trucks, you know, bobtailing, and we're all just kind of hanging out and waiting for our next load. Basically, things shut down on the Sunday, so that's where I'm at. Um, predictions for the future. Here we go. This is where we'll, where I'll sum things up. I think Joe Biden is going to be elected president of the United States. I don't have any intention of making this a political podcast or being political for any reason. 
but in my opinion, I think that um, based on the, on the way that things have been going in 2020 and in recent months, I think that people in large part, especially the independent voters, are going to be looking for just a return back to normalcy and um, a less inflammatory form of government. Um, and um, I don't think it's going to be a landslide, but I think that we will have a what what maybe people will electing him hope to be just someone to keep the peace and not stir the pot too much. Um, I think that in 2021, I think around April, hopefully earlier, there will be a, a vaccine that comes out. Uh, Moderna is looking fairly promising with human trials. Things have been sped up with the whole vaccine process. And there's actually a lot of different avenues and technology that they have to um, to pursue. And um, I think that there's probably going to be maybe three vaccines that come out that are proven to be effective. And people in mass will start get, getting vaccinated. And, um, you know, it's going to be a contentious thing, you know, just like with the mask. Some people are going to say, well, you know, the government's trying to kill me or something like that. And I don't want to get vaccinated. But, you know, by and large, people will start getting vaccinated. Um, I think that the recent surge in the coronavirus cases with regard to young people will have a deleterious effect in, in, in that um, older people or more vulnerable population will be exposed to, to it because there are more cases out there. There's been a second surge. Um, I think that the second surge, just if I could really quick say, I, I kind of predicted that it would happen as a result of people quarantining for too long. Basically, people stayed home for three months, didn't leave their house, and that's fine and good, but ultimately, if at some point, they're gonna leave their house, and when they did, they came out in large numbers, and now the virus has spiked uh, amongst young people. The death rate has not spiked. It's possible that the death rate could, could follow, or the death rate won't be as bad, which I'm hoping, but, um, I think that the, the, other than the deleterious effect of, of it affecting vulnerable populations, I think that more people getting this virus combined with more hopefully getting vaccinated in the near future will lead to what, you know, what they would call herd immunity where so many people are now immune to it as a result of either getting the virus or getting vaccinated that the virus just has nowhere to go essentially and it dies out and that that's what I'm hoping for I don't think that staying home is gonna you know staying home and, and sheltering yourself for three months is essentially in some ways prolonging it now the whole point of that was to obviously you know not overwhelm the healthcare system um, I think by and large it, it hasn't been as bad as everyone thought it was gonna be it didn't overwhelm the healthcare system there weren't any hospitals that ran out of beds there's been a lot of research done and a lot of learned on how to properly treat it. Um, and there are a lot more people that are have antibodies to it. Um, I don't know for a fact whether I do or don't, but you know, since I was sick for a month in April, I haven't been sick since, so knock on wood, again, very healthy. So I think that another prediction is that there will be a vaccine. People will start to get it. January, February, but but the most important thing about the vaccine is going is that it's going to inst instill confidence in people, and it's going to give people the confidence that there is a way to prevent myself or my family from getting this. And um, you know, I've taken the vaccine, and now that more people have taken the vaccine, um, you know, it, it's just I, I'd hope that that would be the savior that we can all just sort of relax a little bit and say, okay, things can go back to normal now. We're vaccinated against this virus, um, which was very, very virulent, um, unfortunately. Um, I think that the economy will, will rebound. Um, the stock market so far isn't doing that bad. You know, some companies like the travel sector are shedding jobs. I think um, American Airlines shed like 25,000 jobs last week. Um, so, you know, the tourism sector, you know, is going to take a big hit. People aren't going to go out as much, but slowly, I, I hope that 2021 will, will start to be a better year and we'll have more of a normal summer. People come back to the movies and, you know, 
jobs will start to reappear and it'll, it'll just kind of slowly fade back into normalcy which we're, which we're sort of starting to see but then at the same time we've had this spike in viruses um i'm disappointed with my kids because they have been kind of shortchanged to high school experience my son won't be able to start in-person high school his freshman year my daughter won't be able to have a full senior year uh, both of their sports programs are canceled so what we decided to do is to just basically um, get them over to my mom and dad's place in Michigan and let them have some fun out there. Shout out to Eddie Baker. Shout out to Christopher Zender. I know you're listening. And, um, you know, um, shout out to my lovely wife, Brigitte. Um, shout out to all the new listeners. If you haven't listened to my podcast, I really appreciate that you do listen to it. Um, in case you're interested, I'm from, I've lived most of my life in California and I just kind of started this podcast just as a way to talk back because I listen to a lot of podcasts myself and I just had a few things to say. Um, it's basically a podcast about nothing and if I, I did classify it on Apple Podcasts as, um, as being um, an entrepreneurial podcast, which, which it is. I think I held true to that this one episode, you know, having just... And in previous episodes, too. I've talked about my previous jobs and sales jobs and so forth. Um, So I appreciate you listening. Shout out to Sarah Candy Girl down in Mexico City. Um, Professor Double X. I know you guys are out there. So, again, thank you so much for listening to Episode 8. Please tune in. I'm going to try to get an episode out and an interview, hopefully, um, within the next month. It's my goal at least. But, um, you know, stay strong. Take some risks. You know, start a business. Work hard. Reinvent yourself. That's my, that's my advice. Because everybody always saying, you know, stay safe. Stay safe, you know. And you should stay safe. Because health is wealth. The most important thing you have is your health. Um, you know, but you also need to take some risks in life. That's just how it works. You take a risk when you get in your car and drive to the grocery store to buy food. It's, there's just there's no way around it. Risk is baked into everything that we do. And, um, you know, just saying, well, I want to stay safe, and therefore I'm just going to stay in my house for the foreseeable future, that's not really a viable strategy. So, you know. But, yeah, definitely wear your mask. And... Um, Thank you for listening to episode eight of the City Connect podcast with me, your host, Prince Carl.